Hi, my name is Megan Edwards of Focus Communications, and today we're getting an update from SK Mining, which trades on the Toronto Venture Stock Exchange under the symbol ESK. Joining me today, we have Vice President of Exploration, John DeDecker. John, thank you so much for joining us today, and welcome back. Uh, thank you, Megan. Thanks for having us. Um, have a lot of exciting news to report. Yes, you do. So today, SK announced the discovery of multiple new VMS systems across your consolidated VMS project located in the Golden Triangle of British Columbia. An exciting development for the company, having just last month announced commencement of this exploration program. Um, so, John, I'll hand it over to you to give the listeners an in-depth overview of this release and what you've discovered in this early stage of the program. Okay, great. Thank you, Megan. Just uh, start off with our disclaimer page, uh, do your own due diligence uh, as far as investing goes. And there will be forward looking statements that I'm going to be talking about. Um, start off with an overview of our property right here. Um, you know, our big focuses right now are the, the TV Jeff area. It's been our focus um, since about 2020. Um, and then we're adding in Scarlet Ridge. So these are going to be the two areas that I talk about today. Um, and, you know, they're TV just kind of the heart of our 526 square kilometer property. And then Scarlet Ridge is over here off to the northeast part of the property. So uh, currently uh, we have about um, uh, 5,370 meters of our uh, core drilled. And that's within the first month of drilling. Um, which, you know, put that into perspective, uh, we didn't start drilling until June 24th last year. So we really have a huge head start on uh, the season compared with last year. And, and you know, we're at 18% of our planned uh, total of 30,000 meters. And I think we're on track to um, hit that 30,000 meter target and likely we'll be exceeding uh, that um, target because we're picking up the pace of drilling throughout the summer. So just wanted to uh, show again this slide that I had used um, during our, uh, our last interview uh, where we had just started drilling this Jeff North area. And this is what a lot of our press release talks about. Um, and I had gone over um, some of our targeting criteria uh, that we have um, several of these um, IP um, anomalies, these resistivity anomalies you can kind of see and these areas right here, that was really what our targeting criteria uh, was, was looking at those resistivity anomalies combined with our um, Sky Tim data, which is kind of what this map, this rainbow colored map is, as well as our soil sample data and data that we um, have from Drill Corps over the past two years. And we're really able to show uh, that we have these intense corridors of hydrothermal alteration. So what we've been doing uh, this season is looking at Jeff North, um, getting, you know, from about 700 meters to a kilometer and a half north of Jeff and uh, projecting these um, horizons up into this area. And we drilled them. And um, sure enough, what we found um, just with field mapping and our preliminary investigations, and then as I'll show you with Drill core, as that indeed uh, this Jeff North area um, has a very pronounced um, ridge kind of running through this area right here that's a silicified ridge that is a silica alteration that is a, a hallmark of uh, VMS deposits or proximity to uh, the core of the upflow zone of a VMS deposit. Uh, so at, at this point, we've drilled all the holes that we have um, noted on this slide right here. And uh, for the most part, most of these have intercepted intense hydrothermal alteration as well as stock work, um, sulfide mineralization, in some cases, semi-massive to massive sulfide mineralization. Um, and our, our work from last year has shown uh, that the soil samples do have quite a bit of a uh, silver arsenic and mercury anomalism. And it, it's worth uh, pointing out uh, that we also have um, and this area that I'm going to annotate right about in here, uh, we actually had a, a soil, or excuse me, a rock chip sample that uh, got about five grams per ton gold and uh, was at 73.2 grams per ton silver. So we know this area is um, precious metal endowed. And it certainly seems that our uh, latest uh, drill core 
uh, is indicating that that could be the case here as well, particularly again with our Pathfinder um, element anomalous and we're finding in drill core. Um, as, as I had mentioned, our mapping team has been out uh, to this area early on and uh, we found in this big green area right here, a large trend of intensely altered and sulfide mineralized peperidic basalt, which is one of the host rocks for the Jeff deposit, which is down here in this area where I'm putting the circle. So what we've been able to show, um, particularly up in this north area here, is that we've intercepted a new hydrothermal or a new VMS upflow zone that is associated with intense uh, sulfide mineralization as well as hydrothermal alteration. So we're we're really excited uh, that we've, you know, pushed this uh, VMS system about a kilometer and a half northwards of Jeff. And since we can already kind of correlate uh, the hydrothermal systems with the uppermost part of Jeff with the lower part of TV, what we're able to start showing is that we actually have five kilometer strike length of VMS mineralization where you have these um, distinct upflow zones, kind of strung like pearls along this five kilometer trend. And that's where we're finding these sky tim anomalies. And now we're able to start confirming we're finding more um, VMS uh, sulfide um, um, occurrences. So just going quickly through uh, some of this drill core from this area, it, it's pretty fantastic. Uh, we're looking here up at this uh, left-hand image right here at a, a pepperidic basalt that is almost completely replaced by uh, sulfide minerals and is intensely silicified. Uh, this is a very good sign that not only are we right in the core of a VMS upflow zone, but we're also right next to the seafloor because uh, that is in that near subsea floor environment where this um, alteration or this uh, replacement style um, mineralization occurs. And then again, we also have a considerable amount of stock work or that vein um, style sulfide mineralization that's hallmarking that feeder zone. It's really marking where those fluids are kind of cracking and filtering up through the rocks towards this seafloor horizon. And we found that to be pretty ubiquitous in every drill hole um, so far at um, Jeff North, the uh, stockwork mineralization and the intense hydrothermal alteration. Um, speaking of uh, the alteration mineralization we have, and uh, this drill hole, J2294, encountered quite a bit of the silica alteration associated with polymetallic um, mineralization. So in addition to pyrite, we're getting sphalerite and galena, and we actually do see um, small uh, bits of tetrahedrite, which is a, a silver mineral that's usually associated with electrum at our Jeff deposit. Uh, so we're, in addition to this visible mineralogy in our um, handheld x-ray fluorescence um, indicated pathfinder elements, we're really excited that we're on to um, another precious metal mineralized system. Obviously, we have to wait for the assays uh, to see just how much uh, gold and silver is in the system, but we are seeing the right indicator minerals. And then um, talking about uh, the bigger picture on the property, so uh, we have TV and Jeff down here, as I said, it's about at minimum a five kilometer corridor. Uh, we're still uh, doing soil sampling. We've uh, finished our soil sampling in, at the Jeff area. Um, and we're actually getting ready to do a little bit more up here for this anomaly right here. But so far, all of these sky tim anomalies that we've examined um, along this uh, TV Jeff corridor have turned out to be um, VMS style mineralization. So we have a five kilometer trend here about, I'd like to talk about Scarlet Ridge up here. This has been a big focus of some of our preliminary field work, and it will be the primary focus of our mapping efforts uh, this season. Uh, but Scarlet Ridge is absolutely phenomenal. Um, as you can see on uh, the image of our Bleg survey map uh, to the right here, uh, Scarlet Ridge is associated with a large cluster of very intense bleg anomalies. And that's our bulk leach extractable gold um, analysis that's showing that there is 
um, outcropping um, gold bearing rocks within this area. And, you know, we, that got us to look out there in 2021 and we identified it as a primary target to hit in 2022. Uh, so what we found between last season and uh, this season's confirmed it even more is that we've got um, just at Scarlet Ridge two uh, VMS feeder zones very similar to uh, what we're intercepting at TV and Jeff. Um, however, it's important to note that these um, feeder zones are going through what we call upper Hazelton group rocks. Uh, these are the same types of day sites and rhyolites uh, that host the SK Creek uh, deposit, which is just uh, seven kilometers due west of Scarlet Ridge. Um, and when you get out there and look at Scarlet Ridge, I, I just walked up the entire feeder zone about uh, 10 days ago, and you see nothing but just this intense um, kind of staining, this red and orange staining we call a Gaussian. And you can see all these fractures are just hosting this orange, red, yellow staining. That's actually associated with sulfide mineralization. When you uh, get a close up look at these uh, rocks, what you see and stuff like this. And I'm talking, you know, all the way from the bottom of the valley to the top of this ridge, you know, about 800 meters of nonstop, a uh, stock work style sulfide uh, mineralization, just cutting through all of these rocks. In some cases, uh, what we see um, is something like in this image where about half of this rock has been replaced by sulfide uh, mineralization. So we're, we're looking at, um, not only stock work style mineralization, but um, replacement style mineralization. Um, if you look at this along strike, so the feeder zone would kind of be coming up like that. And then these fluids go along these um, permeable horizons. The fluid can actually flow through this and cause additional um, subsea floor replacement style mineralization along uh, these trends along strike that uh, continue for hundreds of meters. So in addition to the stock work zone, we have about three of these uh, favorable horizons for this kind of lateral uh, mineralization. And these are the sorts of things that we're going to be targeting uh, with drills here um, coming up within, I'd say the next 10 days or so where we've just uh, gotten uh, the clearance to uh, start building pads out here at Scarlet Ridge, and that's what we're going to be doing in short order. Um, so I've developed a, a model based off of our, uh, this transect I did up uh, this, um, you know, this whole area up to the top of the feeder zone at Scarlet Ridge. And what we see is that it's pretty much nonstop peperitic day site. So that's this uh, day site's an igneous volcanic rock intruded into mudstones. It's just all busted up. And the entire trend is filled with stockwork mineralization, as well as, um, in particular, along these kind of rhyolite corridors here. Um, that's where our lateral uh, fluid flow and uh, subsea floor replacement style mineralization is occurring. Uh, so we've got a very solid uh, surface-based model um, and, and the good thing is this, these beds are dipping more or less vertically. So we're getting a true cross section through this VMS deposit. And we're very confident what we're dealing with is a feeder zone. These rocks are intensely altered. We see the stock work mineralization that's kind of shunting out into this um, a long strike style mineralization. It, this is a textbook VMS deposit. It's completely an outcrop because as, as you can see on some of these photos, this entire area is just outcrop. It's glacially polished. It's a, a mapper's dream. I mean, it's just unbelievable. We had Thomas Monarchy, who's one of the leading uh, experts in DMS deposits and our, one of our consulting geologists come out there and he's just blown away by uh, the quality of um, the outcrop and just how a good of a VMS system this thing appears to be. Um, yeah, and you have a lot of significant targets developing here. Uh, will you be drill testing each target in this program? Yeah, uh, we will be. Uh, for starters, we're going to be hitting this southern 
uh, VMS feeder zone, which is uh, what I've got um, over here on this map. Um, we actually have some uh, gold uh, rock chip samples uh, from historic and uh, last year's surveys that show up to about two and a half grams per ton uh, gold. And, and it's several other anomalous, um, you know, we're talking between 0.1 and half gram per ton gold and up to 90 grams per ton silver throughout this entire zone. Um, but we also, again, we have a northern feeder zone uh, that we're going to be getting out in our mapping crews. We'll be um, hitting that up here uh, within the next couple of weeks. And then to the south uh, west along this trend, uh, we have the AP zones and the uh, Tarn Lake uh, showing these. The AP has been drilled historically back in 1990, has intercepted up to about eight grams per ton over a few meters. Um, there's indications that there's probably more in that area. And then the Tarn Lake zone uh, combined with Scarlet Ridge gives us about a six kilometer trend uh, with, um, let's say, four to five good targets along that trend. So I, I think it's going to be very similar to what we're seeing at TV and Jeff, except it's all in the open and you can see these things uh, on the surface. It's, it's pretty amazing. Absolutely. And to finish things off for our listeners, uh, could you give us a quick update on timelines and when you expect the first set of results to come from this program? So we've been sending um, batches of the assay weekly since uh, we started drilling. So we, we have assays at the lab. I'm checking on them daily and I can say that uh, the majority of our maybe first five or six Jeff North drill holes have been processed and they're in the queue to be analyzed. Um, discussing uh, the turnaround time with the labs, uh, they have ensured us that it's going to be a lot better than last year, uh, particularly as uh, COVID protocols have been loosened and they've expanded capacity. But again, we'll just have to, to wait and see how quickly those um, things can be turned around. But that, that, that's obviously going to be one of the big drivers uh, for things is getting these assay results back. But uh, we're pretty excited to get those given uh, what we've been seeing in Drill Corps so far. Thanks again, John. We look forward to hearing more from you soon as you continue to test these targets. Have a great day. You too. Thank you, Megan. I look forward to talking to you again. Um, we're going to hit up a lot of exciting targets in the next uh, few uh, weeks and months ahead. 